Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the number one place to get better at League of Legends. I am Nice, and it is time to do some morning stuff. I am going to be doing a... Got some new special hotness this morning. We are in the Nice classroom. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Consider subbing. Today, I am pleased to announce that we have a lot of cool things on the horizon. So, if you, uh... If you want to get sneak peeks, you should sub up to the Nice stream. And you should join the uh, Macro Mansion. All you have to do is be a sub. And it's good to be here, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? I'm thinking, uh... You guys enjoying the new stream environment? Hope you guys are. We put some work in. Shouts out to Beer Man Stan. My editing team. Guys, pleased to announce that we have awesome stuff on the horizon. You need to go over... Well, if you haven't subbed to the stream, you should sub. This is the number one place to get better at League of Legends. If you're subbed, you get access to the Macro Mansion. It's pretty dope. Yeah, we are we are grinding. I'm going to uh, do some quick morning announcements to see if anything's popping in the world of League of Legends. Thank you, Bjergsen. Is he retiring? Hey guys, Bjergsen here, and I have a bit of an update for you guys. Team Liquid and I are going to be parting ways for the 2023 season. This is a... This is a guy who's been around in the pro scene for, I mean, it feels like he's just been, he, it feels like he is the NA pro scene. This is, his results, his recent results haven't really been great. It was weird because he took a break. I think he took a break for a year and then he came back like after taking a break from a year and then he was playing again. And his results, the team liquid weren't spectacular. Um... It's got to feel so weird, man. It's got to feel so weird being a part of this ecosystem. And then you just wake up. It feels like you probably just wake up one day and then you just, you're not hanging. At least as much as you would like to. Because obviously, like, when you're a pro, it's all results-based. Right? It's results-based. Like, if you're not crushing it, if you're not absolutely killing it, then... But this guy has won uh, LCS a ton of LCS championships. Has been to Worlds multiple times. Um, a lot of people hate on him, but he, he was always a solid player. And he always uh, seemed to strive to be one of the best, if not the best. So um, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty significant announcement, I think. Even though I'm not a huge like LCS follower, and I don't really give a shit about LCS personally. Uh, there's no denying that the guy has been dominant in that league for a very, very long time. And only recently has he kind of fallen off, but saying fallen off is is kind of douchey because I mean, the dude has been, it's, he's kind of like the gatekeeper of, of NA. I mean, re, uh, really the gatekeeper in terms of like, well, if you want to say NA's bad then you gotta beat this guy. And most people couldn't in general, like in general sense, like most people couldn't. And that's kind of how I always viewed him personally is that like, there's really there was no denying that uh that he was there for a reason so pretty significant um and he's picked a good time to just back out i think piosic on stream said that barrel predicted the t1 would attempt to backdoor the elder fight drx entered the elder fight knowing that backdoor might happen and answers attempt calm and collective i believe it i believe it they were they were unbeatable in worlds they like you just couldn't you could never like count these guys out the entire event and they were very very calm even I don't know if you guys saw the ending of... Yeah, 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 right here. This is like... This is heartwarming. Hold on. Let me skip ahead. Watch this. If you didn't see... Basically, this team, DRX, they get to the finals. They've never even beaten T1. They go to a five-game uh, series and win in like a dramatic fashion. Uh, but like I said, the ending of this series, this is their comms. It's like heartwarming. <laughs> Obviously, it's in Korean. You can't understand it, but just... So they're having this intense fight, right? They're having this intense fight. T1 goes for this intense backdoor play. Now, backdoor attempt comes through. They defend it. Really well timed. I also kind of almost gets caught. I say kind of almost gets caught. 
And then right here. Pretty crazy stuff. And so, yeah, if you didn't see if you didn't see the world's event, you should check out the other videos. It's a very, very, very good ending. And those guys, like, like I said, it's just heartwarming. Like you can't really deny it. Let's see what else is there in the news today? <laughs> Turning off chat made League into one of the best roguelike ex experiences or best roguelike games I've ever played. Every game starts at, uh, every game starts at level one and has a different outcome and flow. Even if every champion is the same like the game before, you focus on yourself and make a better place of decisions. The other bots in the game's different difficulty level. It's okay to lose if you get overwhelmed, just like in other roguelike games. Best decision ever. Honestly, Riot needs to bug fix some of these bots because they rarely get stuck in base or spam ping someone. But this is a workaround to speed the pings. Kind of agree, man. I kind of agree. We're we're turning this is a new era. This is a new era of league that's about to become that's about to happen. Okay. I've been talking about this and saying it for years and years and years but the fact is that when i use these like poker comparisons all the time and people roll their eyes and get tired of them poker is the closest representation to league of legends that we have right now and it was inevitable that we were going to get an anonymous mode when the lp has like a real value like it has a clout value it has a monetary value it has a content value. Um, it was going to happen that eventually when these trolls and all that stuff, you just can't deal with them in, in a reliable way, in an automated way. It was bound to happen that an anonymous mode was coming and that you were going to be incentivized to stay as far away from uh, outing yourself publicly in the game. Um, this is going to be... This is going to be a very, like, culturally, more people are realizing that it's, it is unwise to interact with other people, right? Like, it's unwise to, I mean, when I say interact, like, chat, um, to uh, rely on others, to trust your teammates, to do, the only thing that really matters is playing the best League of Legends you could play, and then just muting the chat, right? And then the anonymous mode is also going to do away with a lot of the apps that rely on data mining uh, players, um, it's going to hurt those apps uh, immensely. So I think that this is, again, a very, very significant time to be a League of Legends player. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to look, but it's feeling more and more like people are realizing that game is best. Basically, your best experiences with League come when you just actually do focus on yourself. And now Riot's also adding all these other changes down the pipeline that are going to kind of promote that. Where it's anonymous mode they're looking into i heard that they're looking into uh reporting hold on i gotta find the thing let me see here there was something on twitter if i can find it i'm gonna try to find it real there was uh, i can't find the tweet right now but there was a thing that came out that said that uh riot is exploring manually reviewing higher elo games finally at the uh basically i think during preseason. so Aside from the fact that jungle's being radically changed, the anonymous mode is coming through, Riot's openly saying that they're going to review games in higher elo. I think the community perception has finally hit a point where Riot has to act. Um, I was just talking to my editor about this and that there's a ton of stuff in the tech sphere right now that's unrelated to League of Legends. Twitter's very likely to go... I mean, Twitter might legitimately... Twitter might legitimately go bankrupt. Facebook just laid off like... Uh, I think it's like 11,000 employees. Uh, I think that Riot is actually at a point where they're probably seeing, at least in the North America side of things, they're probably seeing a lot of downswings in a lot of places. And it's probably making them more likely to respond um, because of all this, uh, all these changes that have been, or, or I guess all this negative, uh, these just negative results like monetarily. Um, and then obviously community perception is the first thing that they're going to look at. So I just think it's very interesting. And I think that the future of League is, I don't know, if, I would argue that it's looking bright, but you know, Riot, whenever Riot focuses on, I, I'm optimistic, but I'm also realistic, right? Like 
I personally love competitive side of things. Like I don't care about pro play, but I love the competitive side of solo queue and that solo queue's rank has a value, right? No one can take that away. Like if you're climbing the ladder, um, there's value in that. People want to see you climb. People care about the, 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 uh, the experience of the streamers, the content creators and all that. I care about that. Um, but there's no denying that every time a game company focuses more on appeasing the competitive side of the video game uh, in any game, I don't really think that there's like a, a proof of, of give a shit in the community. I think that the only thing that really matters in a game, uh, and, and this is just fact of life, the only thing that really matters is in a game is how, you know, do casuals enjoy it? Do casuals care? Um, you know, obviously I've benefited monetarily from doing coaching videos and making coaching content and yelling at people and, and trying to get their fundamentals down or whatever. Um, but I also think that, you know, my service is a very, very valuable one, not for me financially, but also for League of Legends on the whole, is that the more people that are playing your game, that are learning your game, that's good for the game. Um, so I don't think that giving a shit about higher elo really matters. Uh, I want them to care. But I don't know if that matters for the, the health of the game really right now. Um, but I'm I'm happy to see it. I, I don't know if I don't know if changing anything in higher elos really matters, but I want them to do it because I give a shit. Right? What they should be focusing on is making the, the new player experience better uh to weather the storm that's impending. At least that's my opinion. But yeah. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. And then um, I don't know if you guys have seen this dev spill the beans thing, but it's it's basically Riot's version of comedians and cars getting coffee. Uh, it's honestly a really cool premise, but it's far too short. I I've never seen a video so short. Look at this. The guys are like, hee hee, we're rioters. Hi. And then they're talking about jungle pets. Here you go. Having fun. You can't play League of Legends without playing the jungle once or twice. And it's just a brand new experience you can't get from anywhere else. So it's a narrative for how the jungle functions, but it's also just something to keep you. I don't get this narrative. Like, I, I really don't get the narrative with the pets. I mean, this is a cool, this is a cool video. It's a cool concept. But yeah, this is, uh, to me, I, I don't, I don't understand what they're saying um, when they say this. I guess, I guess if you step back or zoom out and think about it in terms of like how lonely jungle feels, I guess, maybe it's like a way to like psychologically mark a change in like balance or in design philosophy, right? So when you queue jungle, you play league, you queue jungle, you know what's going to happen, right? You already know what's going to happen. You're going to do this weird role that you can practice. Right, which obviously you can go to practice tool, you practice your clears and all that. You're about to do this weird role, and you know that your team is going to blame you if things go bad. You know it. You know it. The role is complicated, and to the average League of Legends player that plays jungle or is getting into it, it's a very like you question your sanity a lot of the time. So I almost feel like if I were to try to try to like imprint or tr try to assume or to hypothesize like what it is they're they're going for here i think this is like a, a way of them marking it down clearly that they they understand that the jungle is, is like the pets represent at its core the understanding that the jungle needs more for lack of a better term it needs more like humanity or something needs more needs more friendship positivity this type of mindset because i can't understand how pets have anything to do with anything uh at least thematically other than that right which i guess if you wanted to frame it that way it's okay i guess they couldn't have like you know they couldn't have like a dude following you around the jungle telling you that everything's gonna be okay <laughs> so they just went for these like pokemon <laughs> Jungle needs an AI friend. <laughs> I mean, everything they're doing with the pets, like if you haven't seen Falaris Rundown, uh, check out his channel. He does a rundown on the jungle changes. It's a phenomenal rundown. He's my, he's my, my, basically my lead jungle coach and he's uh, really good at what he does. And, um, 
you know, if you haven't seen these changes, they're designed to make the jungle more friendly and they're designed to take the gap, the, 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 the variability of the role. Um, say you first time fiddle jungle right now, any person watching this video right now, you're going to clear like dog shit. You're probably not even going to get through your clear for like four minutes, right? That's just facts. Um, but theoretically you can clear at like three, I think it's like three, oh seven or something crazy low um whatever it is but the point is is that like these clears with the pets and everything they're trying to make it so that clearing the jungle isn't so much of a fucking wide gap right and we could sit here and argue and debate on whether or not it's a good thing for the game bad thing for the game whatever right casual casual is getting this special treatment you cannot deny nobody really in a lot of these re regions in lower elos wants to play jungle because it's overwhelming it's frustrating your team blames you for everything it doesn't make any fucking sense like the clears are out of control the skill gap on the whole the whole like kiting camps is super wide camera control requirements way higher than all the other roles um, there's no denying that it needs to be a friendlier role. But anyways, if you want to see rioters doing like this very weird shorthand comedians and cards, I, I actually don't mind this video format, but like, what the fuck is it only two minutes? Like, what a waste. You know, I, this is one of those things where like, since I've been to Riot and I know what's happening here, this coffee shop that they're sitting in, this isn't like, this, this is their coffee shop. Bilgewater Brew, that's their coffee shop. How the fuck? Do they only how do these guys these paycheck stealers how are they only filming a video that's two minutes long about such a like just do a whole video you assholes like have a conversation who cares that's what i hate about big corporate like they could never do a video like this where you just talk you always got to make sure that like oh you don't say it wrong oh. it's just lame because this would this could be a really cool i would love to hear i'd love to hear from like normal i would love for them to humanize themselves a little bit uh because it's a super negative environment being a rioter and and i love to hear like you know like they say you know the guy says that uh that they're trying to you know they're trying to incorporate these pets like talk more about the the fucking show some show some more uh or tell some stories about what the hell you guys were talking about in order to get to pets specifically i don't know but anyways, <clears throat> that's all I got for morning announcements this morning. Hope you guys are enjoying, uh, are enjoying, enjoying the new scenery that we have uh, and the the new setup that we have. Um, I'm gonna get into angry knees mode, but you can totally expect that when we're doing coachings, uh, when I'm going through vods uh, from time to time, we're gonna be using the scenery to cover some different stuff. Uh, I have some projects on the horizon too. I hope you guys are. Uh, excited because the new season's coming and we're getting really 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 ready for the new season i have a lot of cool stuff coming uh for the next season but yeah without further ado without further ado you'll see more of the scenery later but it is time to go into angry niece